104 106. Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, in studio for your entertainment titillation, the one and only Mario Rosenstock. Not only can I welcome you to Red FM, but also to Red TV. Hey, hey and Red Digital. Good, Good morning, morning, Neil. Thanks very much be, for having me. You must me. be seriously famous because you get on television as well. Like That's right, yeah. I'm bringing a beautiful lens, being <laughs> shot by a gorgeous camera woman. And, and he says um, to me, oh my God, I never did my hair. How did you get into... I tried this off. You, you came down what? Is it, is it not on? Okay. No, it's fine. Anyway, go on. How did you get into uh, first class uh, with, the, with the unshaven and your hair all over the yeah, place? Yeah, I was in first class in the 7 to, seven to, to, seven to 9 30 down. Fry? 7 to 9 30 down. I had one sausage and the two <laughs> fried eggs. <laughs> and uh, I had the soda bread because they always asked you, as you want soda, the, the white bread, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then I got straight out of there into a taxi. You and only you want to have the toast, but you feel that you have to be posh in first class. Yeah, no, so I went for the soda bread as well, and I just didn't eat it at all. Everybody was kind of looking at me going, I wonder, will you go for the soda bread? <laughs> and um, then I got into a taxi, and the taxi driver uh, will remain nameless. So, Will Griffin, if you're listening out there, uh, how are you doing? And he went, and he went, so the conversation started uh, slowly, and he went, oh, you recognise you there now? And I went, yeah. He went, where are you off to? And I went, I went off to Red FM. Prenderville, yeah. <laughs> and I went, I get that a lot. hang on, yeah. Why? Do you like him? He's a langer. <laughs> and I went... Is, Thanks, is, Mario. Hang on. And I went, so you don't like him? I love him. <laughs> and I went, you just called him a langer. Langer has two meanings here in Cork. It can be glorious langer or, or, or bad langer. <laughs> and, I ca- and I said, what would you call him? He's an listenable langer. <laughs> and for the rest of the journey, I got a life history of Neil Prenderville. That's so, what happened. So, no, yeah. so, basically, so basically, things like, he loves Luciano's chips. <laughs> He adores Luciano's chips. Do you know he's up at four in the morning every morning working out the biceps? He's up at Tony Martin's there. He's up at Tony Martin's doing squats. He does so many squats when he bent over there, his trousers split there the other day in the office in Red FM, I heard Lisa told me. And I go, how does everybody... It's like the Stasi down in Cork. Here. The KGB, Kim Jong-un, Pyongyang has nothing on Cork. You're being watched everywhere you go. We're on camera here in studio. But Will Griffin knows everything about us. <laughs> but Cork taxi drivers know everything about everybody. But it's fantastic. They are like the secret police. But what I loved was... What I loved was... Will murdered you and loved you in one sentence. That's it, yeah. You know? But do you know that about Cork? We don't... We Like... We criticise each other, but lo and behold, anybody criticises outside side of Cork, there's hell to pay. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, I, love, I love the self-confidence in Cork um, because it's not an, an arrogant or cocky self-confidence. Yeah, but I have to say, for people that don't know, welcome home. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I went to school in Ashton, comprehensive. Me too. Yeah, did you? Yeah. And, um, and we but won't ask, I, you, we won't ask a, each other the years. I, uh, from 73 to about <laughs> 76, and then I had a baptism of fire. And was Mr. Bond there when he you were there? He was there, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was there. And then I went across the river to the North Mon. Oh, okay. Dun, dun, that dun, was dun, Matt dun, Cooper dun, territory. Dun, dun, dun. Matt Cooper territory, yeah. yeah. And was Mr. Hosford there when you were in Ashton? In Ashton, he was doing yeah. French and geography. Well, you know how I got into comedy, acting, and all that I was going to ask you, is yeah. that where it started? It started all in Ashton, and with the help of um, a kind of a Dead Poet Society-like teacher called Stephen Daunt. Yes, and yeah. Stephen Daunt absolutely made English classes and Hamlet and Death of a Salesman and all this a joy for all of us. And it, he went, we're doing Death of a Salesman this year. Who wants to play Willie? A 63-year-old. Um, Willie burnt Lomax. out, burnt out, burnt, burnt out American salesman. And I said, I'll have a go. And at the end of it, I was, I said, there's nothing I want to do else in my life. Uh, Anybody try and talk you out of it, though? Like yeah, everybody. Folks, right? <laughs> yeah. My folks wanted me to be a barrister. and <laughs> uh, a good barrister. They said I would have been a great barrister. I always was able to negotiate uh, my way around the house and uh, <laughs> exceptional deals on, on sweets from the time I was young and uh, rights around the house and everything. And they went, he's got to be a barrister because he's a little bollocks. <laughs> and... Uh, so I said, no, I'm, I'm hooked on this now. I'm absolutely hooked on this. And I was right, because not that, I'm Conor, not that I'm Conor McGregor-like zealousness about it, but I do believe that I found the thing in life that I, I, somebody wanted me to do. But well, where did you get a break, though? Did you go to UCC and do stand-up there or what? So I said to myself then, I checked it all out and I went, where am I going to do it? And they said, uh, the best place to do is players in Trinity College. I said, how do I do that? And they went, well, you have to do an undergraduate degree. So I, did, I did politics and economics. <laughs> so that's where I learned all about my political heroes. And uh, and a bit about economics in the country because I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. But I did plays all the time. So basically, I did. I was an actor, and then I got into Glen Row while I was in college. So I had money. So I was the guy who everybody bought pints for, and, uh, that bought everybody pints uh, when I was in college. <laughs> but I wasn't really very. I was a bit stiff as an actor in Glen Row. And uh, but I realised early on I had a tremendous facility for doing voices. So I used to do impressions of my mother and my uncle and uh, my auntie and girls and boys and everybody. And I could I could single people out in a room and kind of nail them. Um, Without having to practice. No, no practice. 
Do no you practice. practice now even? Like if you're doing, say, O'Gara or Hook or Keane or Miriam or Jerry Adams, would you have to practice somewhere? Like, you know, everybody practices. No, no, like if I'm doing Ron and O'Gara, I'll just... I'll just sit in the shower, I'll sit in the room or I'll just ponder life and I'll just get really downbeat and depressed <laughs> and start talking really as if, you know, I care about nothing and, and my voice will be very monotone, you know, and if even if I'm the happiest man in the world, I'll still stay on a straight line, you know, which of course keeps you on the straight and narrow and cork because no one wants to see you get excited. Um, but I was listening to your evening echo thing there outside and I was going, um, there are none of those, all of your candidates were fantastic, but you've... It, you don't I've, have the evening hurl shout outs like that. No, but... The one you've left out I, I'll throw can you record this yeah throw Joan Burton should be doing that cat. Echo Evening Echo Echo I don't talk Echo Evening Echo Sorry about that, Neil. I don't Neil. know what happened to Levels there. But He's currently starring with Michael, Go- Michael Colgan in the three arena and walking with dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Give the man a break. Uh, no, I absolutely love Cork, Cork characters. Eddie O'Sullivan is one of my favourite characters as well, you know. We've had some fantastic rugby people here, you know. You can't make a, you can't make a bed with a jar of Nutella and hope to get away with it, you know. Do any of them get odd, though? Who? Any of the voices, the real people. Do they get odd with you, you know? Yeah, I believe, for example... Um, Michael, get the hump. Like. Yeah, Michael Flatley, I believe, uh, wants to assassinate me. Oh, big Yeah, I'd be Jesus. Just prouder than any son of Finn McCool <laughs> I am to be talking to Neil Prenderville on Red FM. <laughs> Derek, Derek FM, Derek Doom. Just, <laughs> I'd like to thank all you poor old craters listening out there, Will Griffin in his taxi, for crawling in here in your hands and knees, and ye not two crew beans to rub together between the laddie. <laughs> Ganairi and Boherlet. Tan Milshan Aaron Clushtan. Tan Bany Aaron Fwinog. Agastam Alir Rodi Exact. He got the hump, did he? He wants to, he wants to, because he boxes, you He know. got the hump and so does Daniel. Daniel gets the old hump. Does Daniel he? came up to me once, Neil, and I this is no word of a lie. Daniel came up to me once and he went, by God, Jesus, you do Bertie Ahern great on the radio, so you do. But you can't do me at all. I think you can. <laughs> and this is, a lot of people say that. They go, I'm Dahi O'Shea went, <laughs> Jesus, you're very pretty, the old voices. by I love doing it with Davy Fitz, but you can't do me. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody comes up to me and says, but you can't do me. And um, it's a but, bit like that thing when... But if you're not going to do them right, you leave them out, like... Because you do them right. Oh, thank you. Um, but do you remember when you ever heard your voice first on tape? Oh, and you for went, God's sake, no, it was and, you, and you went, that I do wasn't me. It. And you went, is that me? Yeah. And that's to funny. To this day, I can't yeah. listen. I can't well, you've listen. Got a, to be honest with you, as Liam Gallagher would say, you've got a fantastic pair of pipes, mate. <laughs> You've got a great set of pipes. Um, Thank you. Long may um, they last. Unlike Brendan O'Connor, who, I mean, they've told me to do as many car characters as I can. So who's on the slab this week, Neil? <laughs> Yourself? Why not? Do you want to come on Cutting Edge? Lived on the slab. Yeah, we're running out of guests. <laughs> They're all in the frame themselves. They say that about the Darcy show on television, trying to round up an audience at the weekend. Every guest I've had on Cutting Edge is in the frame now themselves, so I'm running out of guests. Like, <laughs> um, Speaking of that now, uh, Neil, come here. Oh, oh, uh, by God. the way, hello to everybody in Cork. But speaking of that, um, whenever I come to Cork, where would you think I stay? I'd what say, would you think my favourite hotel is? Um, oh my God, there are so many. Like, I, I would oh say... Oh no, I know you're in a compromised position there. No, no, I mean, if it were me, I think one of the most beautiful understated hotels in the city is the Imperial. Oh yeah, but that's classic though. It's classic. That's classic old Cork. Yeah. So when I, I, don't say, know, I don't know... My, my favourite at the moment is the Hayfield Manor, right? So I always stay there. But the last time I was here, I was going to stay in the Hayfield Manor and I had the... It was booked out. So I had the for, great fortune to stay in the Castle Martyr. Right. Right. And I went into the Castle Martyr and they said, lo and behold, our upstairs is free. This penthouse place oh, they have. Have you ever heard of that place? I know there's a presidential suite. It's unbelievable. Suite the presidential suite. Now you I would get lost. I stayed there, right? On and they went, own. so I wandered around, right? And um, they went, oh, Mario, here you go now. Settle in there, no way. And uh, they were proud of it, you know. And they went, oh, you don't know where the bedroom is, eh? No, we'll just, we'll leave it, try and find this now for another few minutes there. So I was wandering around this mansion <laughs> looking for the bed. So eventually I found the bedroom and they went, there's the bed now. And I went, great. And they went, do you know who slept there? <laughs> You know, like core people ask you a question knowing you'll never get the answer. I know, yeah, yeah. I know. Do you know how I slept there, do you? And I went, Beyonce? No. Kanye West? No. Ray Darcy. <laughs> Good luck and good night. <laughs> and then they expect me to pull back the covers and crawl into that bed with that image in my mind. Ray Darcy in the bed after me, by. Oh, my God. Are you, you're, on, you're on tour come the new year, aren't you? Yes, I'm on tour with my new show, Neil, In Your Face. Yeah. Not in your particular face, mm-hmm. in everybody's face. Um, because as people know who come to see my show, I get in their faces. And uh, so the new show is called Mario In Your Face, and it premieres in Cork because I decided, because oh. this is my favourite place to 
uh, perform. Are, 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 are families still here and doing their own thing here? No, no, no. My family's from... I have, I have family in Waterford. I came to school here. Go away. Yeah, so, so I was four did years. You, did you go to border... Did you go to yeah, Rochelle, Rochelle House? With, with all the girls? All 40 girls and 40 boys. Well, oh, is there that many boys? And my first girlfriend, my first love of my life was a girl called Camille O'Sullivan. You're joking. Yeah. Well, did you go to school with Camille? Yeah, we were oh, in the same wonderful. class. Wow. And we ended up as smitten. And she was my first girlfriend and uh, we're still friends to this day. And Fantastic. she's a tremendous woman and Fantastic. she's an amazing performer. And she's I know Cork are very proud of her as well. Passage West girl. And still, I know she's going. She's so storming well. it, yeah. yeah. absolutely. And so are you. Would you mind if I give away, I know that the gig is, it's April, isn't it? It's April and but tickets are on sale now and uh, it's called Marry in Your Face. And my first shows are in the Cork Opera House in April. Absolutely. And uh, that is, actually I think you're doing more than one. You're doing the 12th, uh, 13th and 14th. Yeah, yeah. Doing three nights. And um, so it's a tall order. And radio's going well. Yeah, and radio's Dempsey's going fine. Dempsey's well. Dempsey's yeah, Dempsey says hello, by the way. I ah, said I was going down there today and he said, yeah, say hello. He's, he's just a gentleman. Ah, he is. He's I'm a, glad you said that. He is. Absolutely. I mean, one he's loved. He's loved far and wide. One of the nicest guys. He's a good guy. Long may he's continue. one of the good guys. And pass on Thank our regards so much to for that. Can I give away a couple of tickets? Yeah, you for can. One of the nights? All right. Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. Listen, great to see. you. Echo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mario Thank you very much. Is, is, is the taxi driver outside waiting to take you back? Oh, no, Will is gone long ago now. I don't think I'd get back into a car after what I said about him, do you? He's a langer. He's a lovable langer, though. I know, yeah. A cork langer. I, I always thought a langer was a bad thing, but now it's a good thing. It depends. Yeah. The con- it's, you have to contextualise it, my friend. That's what he put it into, fr- into the frame for me. He went, it depends on the way you're saying it. That's right. Have a great day. Thanks and listen, if I don't see you, I hate saying it in November, but, but happy Christmas. Ah, thanks a million. Cheers. Thanks, Goodbye Dave. to the camera now. Okay, bye-bye, camera. <laughs> good, uh, good luck with the digital hits. <laughs> well done to you. Well done. Well done, Neil. He's a lovely voice. Lovely boy. Off you go. Toodaloo. The Neil Prendeville Show. Red FM.